Hi, in this session, we're going to discuss Flipgrid. Um, it's a really easy tool to be able to use to gather student ideas and voice um, with any kind of activity or assignment that you do in class. Um, so for this session, since we're not meeting live, I am going to create a Padlet to go along with this recording so that if you have any questions or anything still remains unclear, you can go ahead and post it on that Padlet. Uh, your colleagues, please feel free to interact and answer each other's questions. Anything that remains unanswered um, or needs some clarification, I will then go over on Thursday when we come together and I'll address any of those unanswered questions then before we go into our breakout rooms. Um, so let's go ahead and get started talking about Flipgrid. The first thing I want to show you is the dashboard overview of Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a free tool. Um, you're going to log in using your Google credentials. And when you do that, it's going to take you to your educator dashboard, which looks like this. Right. And so from your dashboard, you have a number of different options that you can do um, with your Flipgrid. So I'm going to go over each of the points of your educator dashboard so that you can see what you're doing. Um, so the discussion board is going to be the first thing that's going to pop up on your dashboard. And the discussion is actually where you're going to find your um, groups and topics that you have created. The topics are kind of what you can consider your assignments, right? This is where the students are going to record their responses to whatever it is that you instructed them to do. The groups can be considered your glasses, uh, your classes, and this used to be called grids, right? So if you used Flipgrid before, they used to be called grids. Now they're called groups, and the groups are pretty much your classes. So if I had um, multiple periods, right, I would create a group for each period, and in that group, I would create a variety of topics. Flipgrid does give you the option now that I can create topics without having to have a group. And that's fine. If I wanted to create some kind of one topic that I don't need a whole group for, I just need this one topic because I just want the students to do this, then I can go ahead and just do topics separately. Um, from there, you also have along the top, you have the discovery library and the discovery library holds a collection of different Flipgrid topics that have been created by educators all over the world. And they're there for you to use and you can add them to your own groups and add those topics to your own discussion boards and use them with your students. So it already has like these prepackaged topics that you can use. Uh, the activity uh, dashboard is going to show you all of your recent videos that have been submitted. So you'll see all of the students that have submitted videos to you. You can also see all of your own achievements over time as you create groups and as you create topics to add to the discovery library yourself. You can earn like badges. And so those achievements will also show up all in your activity dashboard. Mixtapes are a collection of videos from different topics and I can put them all together into one what they refer to as a mixtape, right? So I can take videos maybe from one student that is coming from different topics and I can gather all of those videos and put them in one place. The shorts camera is where you can create videos that you can share with your students. You can post them into Google Classroom or it'll give you a link that you can directly share. So it's just a quick way for you to record your own video if you wanted to give instructions or anything else that you wanted to do. The shorts camera is there with a whole bunch of features that you can use. The great thing about the shorts camera as well is that all the features that are on the shorts camera are the same features that the students are going to have when they record. So it'll give you an idea of what the students see when they're recording and all of the different uh, tools that they have available to them. And then Grid Pals is kind of our modern day pen pal system. Grid Pals will allow you to connect with educators all over the world and become and become pals on Flipgrid, where you can then, with your classes, interact and leave video responses with each other. And that way, it creates a whole kind of new modern day pen pal system. So we're going to take a look at each of these tabs in our presentation. I'm going to go through each of these things um, so you can see exactly how they work. The first thing that you're going to do in Flipgrid, right, is if you're from your dashboard, from your discussion, you're going to go ahead and create a group. You'll notice that when you click on create group, it's going to give you two options, the private and the public, right? If we're creating a group for our class and it's going to be one of our private groups, you can go ahead and then give the group name, um, right? If you have different courses, different periods, you would have your course and whatever period number that is, however it is that you wanna name it. 
Then you have your join code, which becomes this link at the end. And that link is what students can click on to bring them to the whole entire group. And in that group, they can see different topics. It is customizable. So you are able to change this back part of the link. You have up to 20 characters. Um, and so you can customize that however you'd like, and it'll let you know whether or not it's available here at the bottom. And then finally, you need to choose how the students are going to join the group, right? How are they going to authenticate themselves when joining? The easiest one is to click on the student email because since now all our students have their Google credentials, by clicking on student email, that means that when they click on the group link, it's going to ask them to verify their account with their Google account. And once they do, it allows them to go into the group. So by clicking student email, that is definitely the best way to create your class groups. After you click move to the next window, it's going to ask you what the domain is that you're allowed to use then because you click student email. So you just make sure you put at aventurecharter.org, right? And that way that it recognizes that anybody with that school domain is allowed to go into the group. You also have the option of creating a guest password. So for any reason you wanted to have parents or you had a guest speaker that was gonna leave a video in your group, you can create a guest password. And that way, when the guest joins the group, they'll have to put in that password to be able to go into the group to um, see the videos. Go ahead and click on next. And then finally, um, it's going to give you an option to duplicate topics. This, you, you can skip that. So if you've created topics in the past and you're creating a new group, it'll actually give you the ability to, when I create a new group, from this drop down, it'll list all of my different topics that I have. And so I can select if I want to take those topics that I've done in the past and bring them into this new group. None of the old videos will come with it, but already all the settings and all the directions will be automatically transferred to my new group if I wanted to use any of my past topics. And like I said, this is something that you can skip. You don't have to do that right away. Um, you can always import topics later to your group or you don't have to do it at all um, if it's a new group. And then finally, you're gonna to get to the share screen. And from the share screen, you'll see the final link which you can copy. And that's the link that you would share out to your students and what they would click on to go to the actual Flipgrid group that you've created. It does have a share to classroom button. So if you click that share to classroom button, it will allow you to choose your class as well as then allow you to choose how you want to share it into that class as well. Um, so you can share it directly to your Google Classroom. And then at the end, once you've created your group, you can click on go to group and it'll go ahead and open up your group window so you can see what it looks like. Now, personally, I prefer to uh, share the topics rather than the group itself. When you share the group link and you start to add topics and topics on there, it becomes a little cumbersome for students to have to maneuver through the group to find which topic they're supposed to be recording at that time. So I prefer to share the topics individually, which also gives me the same option to share the classroom when I create my topic. I'd rather share the topic individually into classroom as the assignment. And that way, when they click on it, it opens directly to that specific topic that they need to record. Just my two cents. I just find that it's a lot easier to use if you share the topics rather than just sharing the group link. So the public one, if you happen to create a public group, and I just wanted to go over that, and maybe this is something that you might use for something like professional development or you know your own professional learning community that you have and you're creating a Flipgrid. I would do it sometimes when I would give trainings in, in conferences and create these groups for the conference attendance to leave feedback. So you might have a scenario where you might create a public group. And so when you click on public group, you go ahead and create the group name and it'll automatically give you the code just like the private one as well. The only thing with the public groups is that, um, actually, let me go back. Um, it will require participants to sign in with any kind of Microsoft or Google account, right? So that is the, uh, the limitation to that for public groups. They do need to have some kind of sign in with a Microsoft or a Google email. Doesn't have to be from your domain, but it does have to be one or the other to be able to actively participate in the group to record a video. 
So once you've created your group, right, this is what your group looks like when you first create it and you go to it, it's going to open up. It's going to give you your join code. Um, and then it's going to have this little sign here, which says you can add a co-pilot. A co-pilot is like a co-teacher. So I can add co-teachers to my group if I wanted someone else to be able to have administrative privileges to my group that they can watch my videos and they can leave responses as well and feedback to my students. Then I can do that by adding a co-pilot. There's also some more um, directions and instructions that you can do here by clicking on the actions drop down. This will let me edit my group if I wanted to edit my group name. Um, I can duplicate my group. I can set up my group notifications so I can set up emails that I can get anytime something happens within my group, if somebody leaves a new video, I can set up notifications. Um, and of course I can then delete it. So just going back to the discussion board, just so you can see the live view of it. So here it is. Here's all of my groups will then be listed when you create them, they'll be listed here. And then you would be able to click on the title of it and that's going to bring you into your group. And so this is the screen that we just saw with the actions. And as you scroll down and you create topics, then you'll see your topics will start to populate along the bottom, all of the topics that are related to your group. So let's talk a little bit about creating a topic. All right. So now that you have your group created, the next thing is to create your topic, which is essentially what your assignment is. So when you click on create a topic, you're going to then create a title for your topic. This is where you're going to add instructions to what the students need to do. So make sure that your instructions are very clear. I always like to use kind of a bulleted or a numbered approach when giving instructions to make sure that students remember everything. You can also hyperlink things. So if I wanted to hyperlink a rubric or something within my instructions, I can also do that. Um, what's important about the instructions is that from the camera view, the students have an option to be able to view what the instructions are. So it's really important that all important details of the instructions are in this prompt window uh, because this is what the students will have access to when they're recording. If they want to be able to refer back to make sure they hit every point, this is what they'll be able to see what's in this prompt window. Then you'll be able to select your recording time and you have anywhere from 15 seconds all the way to 10 minutes that students can record. And you can also turn on or off if you want to include closed captions and also what language you want to include them in. The video moderation toggle, you can toggle it on or off. And that means if you turn this on, when students record their videos, the videos are not going to post onto the group for viewing until you have seen it first. So until you have looked at the video and approved it, then it will go ahead and post onto the group and then other students can actually see the video. So that's how you can manage that with video moderation. You can either toggle that on or off. Along with your group prompt, it also lets you add any type of media. So there's a, all of these different things you can add with your group topic. So I can record my own video as well in Flipgrid and leave that video there that they can watch before they start to answer their prompt. I can upload a video. I can bring a video in from YouTube and maybe I want them to watch that video first. And then based on that information, I want them to leave their um, feedback. I can upload images, you can add emojis, you can bring in documents um, or websites, bring in cahoots, Nearpod lessons. So there's so many things that you can add to your um, Flipgrid topic already that has resources built in that students can refer to and look at first before then leaving whatever their response will be. The access control, this is if I can created a topic first, right? Remember, there's a way that you can create topics as part of a group or you can create standalone topics. So if your topic is part of a group, then I would leave that off because it's going to automatically take on the settings of the group, which means my students have to log in with their Google account to be able to access the group. Same thing with the topic. They have to be able to be logged in with their Google account to access a topic to be able to record. So there's no need to change to turn that on. However, if I created a topic by itself, right, and it had no group, then I would turn this on because then it would give me the way to be able to select that I want my students to use um, their Google accounts. So for example, let me go back into my discussion dashboard and go into topics. 
So if I were to go ahead and add a topic by itself with no group, here with the access control, right, it has to be on because it doesn't have anything from the group to, it doesn't have anything inherent that will then take it from it. So my access, my access control is on and it's already by default, these are my default savings that a student email by at aventurachar.org, right? So this is what happens when I'm creating a topic that is um, standalone. But because my topic, when I create it, is part of my group, right? If I go into my group and I decide to add a topic here, then here it's off because it's already taking on the access control that you set up with the main group, which we already did that. So hopefully that's clear. Um, then we can go ahead and click on more options and it's going to give you some more options to set up your topic and you'll also notice that at the bottom there's a little ticker that you can save changes to my default settings so all of the settings that you create then in the more options for a topic if you want those to be your default settings so that every time you create a topic it's already there and you don't have to go through the process each time you can make sure that you click on that and so when you create that topic the settings that are related to this topic is going to become the default settings for the rest of your topics that you create. Besides the media that you can add to your near um, to your Flipgrid, you also have the ability to add topic attachments. So these are links. You have up to nine external links that you can add. So if I wanted to link to a Google Doc or a slide presentation or a website, I can add nine more external links um, to my top to my Flipgrid topic. Then your topic status is how you can schedule your topic. If I want it to, once I create it to become active right away, then I can go ahead and leave it active. Um, I can schedule it that I don't want it to become active until a certain date. And then to I can turn it off um, either never, right? It'll go to never, that it's always going to be active once it does. Or I can put a stop date, which means at that time, it's going to become frozen. Um, and that means that the videos are there, all the videos that were created are there and you might be able to view the videos, but no one can add new videos once they're frozen, they're view only. And then I can also hide a topic. If I don't want anyone to see those videos any longer, then my topic becomes hidden. I can change my topic status to hidden at any time. Finally, you go into your topic features. Um, and here's where you can set up your notifications. So you can set up whether daily or weekly, however it is that you want to be able to receive email notifications anytime a student leaves a new video for your topic. Um, you can toggle on or off whether you want to allow students to download and share their videos after they create them. If you want students to receive email notifications when new videos are added. So that is really up to you. Um, whether or not you want to keep these on or off, I prefer to keep them off. You can always change those settings later if you need to. Then you come into the video features and the video features are what the students are able to do with their videos. So the video normally creates, you have your video that you record and then there's a selfie that you take at the end of the video, which is the picture that shows up on the group when you first go in to view the videos that's the video that that's the picture that's viewable right so that's you can add filters and stickers to those videos and selfies so you can determine whether or not they can add stickers and filters to their videos and selfies or just to their videos or just their selfies that's up to you um, video comments to keep those on to allow students to reply to one another i do like to keep them on because i do like to have my students reply and give feedback to each other um, the view count and the likes I like to keep off um, just because then they become a little too obsessed with seeing who liked my video and how many likes I have and how many people watched my video. So I keep those things off. The sticky notes is important because it allows students to use post-its that can go on their screen to give them topic ideas as they talk. That's not viewable in the video. It's only viewable to the student, but it can help those students that need a little guidance as to when they're recording to make sure they hit all their points. Video editing, Flipgrid does have an editor. When they record their video, they can trim it and they can rearrange their clips in different ways. So that can be kept on. A, um, attachment link, when, the video, uh, when students record their video, 
right? At the end, they need to put a title for their video and it also allows them to link an assignment. So sometimes if I had students create presentations, I would actually have them then link the slide presentation when they created their video with their presentation, they would then link their actual presentation so that we can then actually see the presentation as well. So the attachment link is something useful to have on as well. So finally, once you go through all of those settings, your topic is ready. And remember, if you clicked on save those settings, that's going to save all of those settings as your default setting whenever you create a topic. And so just like we saw with the group window, now you're able to share your topic link and you can share it directly to classroom. And that way, students will just click on the link and it's going to take them directly to their topic to be able to um, record. When you look at the topic, right, from your group. So if I, in my discussion, I go into my group, right? In my group, I'll see my topic. So here are my topics that I create. Right now, I only have one. As you create more, it'll start to populate down the list. From here, you are able then to Cre um, change the status level of your topic directly from here, whether I wanted to keep it active, frozen, or hidden. I can edit my topic. I can record a response to my own topic. I can add this topic to the discovery library if I want to allow other educators to use this topic. Um, I can move it to another group and I can export the data. And I'll talk a little bit more about exporting data a little later when we go into viewing responses. And then here in the topic, I'll start to see my responses as they populate, as they leave responses, I'll see the number. And then I can just click on the link to the my title of my topic to go into the actual topic to view the video responses. So let's go ahead and now talk a little bit about the shorts camera. That's pretty much the dashboard overview of how to create a topic and a group. Um, so let's take a look at the shorts camera, which is if I wanted to create videos to be able to share with my class, this is where I would do it using the shorts camera. There we go. Um, so the shorts camera, <clears throat> it's very simple. When you click on the dashboard to go to the shorts camera, you'll have a button that says record video and you can record up to 10 minute videos as well, just like the students using all the same features that the students have available. Then you'll be able to share your video the same way that you can share a topic with your link or you can share it directly to your Google Classroom. It also has the ability to have closed captioning. So I can always go in and check my captions and sometimes they're not correct. So I can go in, check my captions and adjust captions as needed if they're incorrect. Um, when you have your closed captions option on. This um, PDF is actually also linked in our Google Classroom, so I have it as one of your resources. And it's a really great resource that gives you a great overview over the camera of how students um, use the camera as well as how educators use the camera. So I wasn't going to redo this fabulous guide that was already done. So I'm just going to go through it with you, um, but you have this PDF for reference that you can always go back and look at it at your leisure a little bit more closely. So when students are able to record their video, right, and they click on that record button from the topic page, then this is pretty much the view that they have, right? This is the main camera view that they'll get. They'll click on the red button to record their video, and that's the basic recording. Um, when they're reviewing their video, right, once you're done with your video, it's going to give you a chance to review your video so you can look it over. And here's where you can actually start to edit it because you can start to um, look at the video, stop it at certain places and be able to cut and rearrange segments. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit when we start looking at the editor. And then finally, once the video is finished, then it's going to ask you to take that selfie, which you can either take the selfie directly from the camera or it can capture a scene from your video and that becomes a selfie. So that's pretty much all of the different views when you're first using that record camera. So the basic student workflow for the camera is right. The students click on the recorder response. That's what it's going to look like when they click on the topic. They'll record their live video. 
they'll review the video and if they're fine with it, they'll take their selfie and they'll turn it in. That's it, that's the basic. Now, for students that go in and actually work with the editing, right? That workflow becomes a little bit different because now students do have the options of recording a live video, but I can also upload videos. So if I recorded my video or have another segment of a video that I want to upload, I can also upload that to my Flipgrid. I can then trim my videos. I can rearrange them. I can add more. So I can record something, I can review it, and then I can think of like, oh, I forgot to include something. There's a button that says add more. I can add more time and record what I forgot. And so when I review it again, I can either keep it at the end or I can rearrange it and bring it back to the front. So there's a lot of editing options within Flipgrid now that students can work with to re review and rearrange their segments. And then once they're happy with their video now, They'll take their selfie and their submit, right? So the workflow is a little bit different for those that are a little bit more savvy in going ahead and clicking edits. And this doesn't have to be that you have to do this, but there's going to be those students that go in and will like to use all of the segment and trimming, and they can do that. They have that option available, and it's really great because before, if you mess something up, you have to delete everything and, and start again. But now with the trimming and the segment views, you are able to salvage your videos and just add more time, record it, and just get rid of the piece that you didn't want and just slide in that other piece if you needed to. So the shorts camera for the teacher works pretty much the same way. And we looked at that in the dashboard. Do a click on record video. And this is what it looks like when you first open your camera view, right? It's gonna give you the time you have up to 10 minutes. Here's where you'll be able to um, record, right? This is your record button. This options menu is where then you'll be able to either import a video, you can um, record your screen as well, um, you can mirror your video. The effects is what's going to allow you to bring in the filters and the frames. Um, and so you'll be able to add all of these different things. Here is where I can clear my camera. So if I brought in filters and frames, I can undo or redo them or I can just clear everything off my camera. And once I'm done recording and I stop it, then I would click on the green next button to move on to the next step. Or I can click on redo where it would delete what I've done so far and I can start all over again. Right, the closed camera, we have to always remember and remind our students as well, if you close the camera, it's going to just delete and stop everything that you're doing. So you have to be very careful with the closed camera to make sure you don't click on that X if you are in the middle of recording or doing something. So in that top corner, this is where, right up here, right, you'll be able to, this is where the students can show the topic. So like, remember what I said when you were creating topics, that prompt window where you're giving the instructions, that's what's going to appear here. So that's why it's really important that whatever we include here is really important because the students can review that from their recording window. Um, it'll show up right alongside their uh, recording window of what the content is. So those directions that we give need to be very important and explicit so that if the students do use it for review, they're able to do that. The sticky notes, which look like this, right? These are only viewable to the student. And that's just something there that the students can take notes and just as a way to guide themselves as they're doing their recording, they can have those sticky notes up. The effects menu, right? When you click on the effects, this menu pops up and it gives you all of these different options that you can use in your video. There's the filter frame, there's the filters, there's the frames that you can frame your video, emojis, you can add text, you can use the drawing tool, you can use the whiteboard feature. Um, so instead of recording your face, you have the whiteboard feature, you can add pictures, and then that little drop down will just collapse that menu right back down again. So these are all of the different camera filters that you have available, right? This is the no filter, and then you have all of these different colors that can be added. The pixelated feature is interesting, especially for the students that might be a little shy about being on the camera. You could always use the pixelated filter, and that way your the face is pixelated, so it's not really easy to tell. And it might it, sometimes it does give students a little bit of ease when it's not um, showing their face. 
The frames, these are all the frames that will go around your video. So these are the frames that you have available. Um, there's like the little news frame, like if they were doing like a little newscast video, it, it has a little frame to go with it to make it look more authentic. So there's all these little frames that can be used to go around the video as well. Text boxes, you have different text that you can use along with different styles and the color can all be changed. Um, so you can add text to your video as well as you're creating this. When you add an object like stickers or a text box, it gives you the option to rotate it, you can duplicate it, you can mirror that object, you can delete it. And it also gives you layering features. So just like if you're using something um, on Google Slides or you're ordering something to go to the background um, or the foreground, you can layer things up or down as well if you're including more than one object on your screen. So these are all of the different emojis and the different stickers that are available to also put on your screen. So you can also put like call outs if you're writing some kind of message. You can use arrows to help you with your video. If you want to um, identify something or you have a presentation that you're showing, you want to use that arrow for emphasis. So there's a lot of different things. Um, See, so arrows can be moved during a recording as a pointer. So speech balloons and text stickers, you can bring in an image and you can kind of make that image more fun. Um, there's the drawing tool that you can draw on the board. It's especially if you're doing it with like a touch screen, it makes it a lot easier because you are able to use that drawing feature and then be able to draw directly on the screen. It's great if you're using that whiteboard feature, you can write on it and directly um, work out anything. And then the boards are here. These are the boards where it could be just a plain whiteboard, but they also have a dot grid. They've got graph, they've got notebook paper. Um, they've got like a blackboard and a chalkboard look. And with the boards, you also now have the split screen adjustment, which is nice, which means that I have the board feature, which can take up my whole entire screen. Or if I use a split screen, I can then have the board only as a portion of my screen. And then you can actually see my face on the other portion of the screen. Um, and then you have the photo stickers that I can bring in right now. It's only PNG and JPEGs that are allowed and you can upload stickers to your Flipgrid as well. So if I wanted to upload a sticker and then from there, any kind of image that's on there, I can then talk about the image itself. So maybe it's something that I did by hand. I took a picture of it. I upload it to my Flipgrid and now can I explain about it and I can use my drawing tools and I can use everything else to emphasize more about what I did. Um, so that's another option that can be done. From that options menu down by the record button, right? These are the different options that you have. So I can upload already a pre recorded clip. I can mirror my video. I can turn off my mic. So if I'm doing something with Flipgrid that I'm just showing something and it's not really me talking, I'm just showing something on the screen, I could do that. And it also does have the option for screen recording. So I can record my screen um, using the Flipgrid camera as well. So if I upload my video, right, I can drag and drop my video directly when I upload it. It can be an MP4 or a .webm video format. And then finally, once I have created my video, I've recorded it, right, that review step is where I will then be able to start editing it. I can click on any segment of the video. So if I, when I'm looking at it, if I click on it, it's gonna enter the segment view. And then from there, I can either add more time if I want to record more, or I can drag and drop any segment to put them in a different reorder view if I wanted to. In the segment view, if I go into the segment view, this is where I can actually trim my video. So if I drag this, I can trim my video. Um, I can delete a whole entire segment um, if I just want to dump it and I can then confirm those changes and it'll return me back to my review view that I was in before. So once that's done and I've reviewed and completed my video, then next is my selfie, which I can either just take the picture to capture my selfie or I can select a frame. If I go to options, it'll capture an image from my video to use as my selfie as well. And I can also then access my effects menu to be able to use it on my selfie as well. So from the shorts camera, if we were doing it, once we have done all that, right, we get to that point, 
where now I can then share my video out with my students, either through the link or I can share it directly to Google Classroom. I can delete my short. And then when I'm done with it, I can just close that window. Um, this PDF is great because it also gives you a view of what it looks like if they're using the app. So if they have the Flipgrid app on their phone or if they're doing it on a tablet, they also have all of these same different um, features that you do from the web app. And so this goes over all of the different features as well. So it's really a great PDF. From the mobile app, what's nice is because you do have that camera, that rear facing camera as well, I can toggle my camera and record things that are on the outside as well. So it does have the ability for me to toggle my front and rear facing cameras depending on what I want to record. Um, and so I have all of these different things. I can use all of my split screens and my segments and all of the same things that I did before, I am able to do as well with my um, app for Flipgrid as well if I'm using a tablet or a mobile device. Uh, one thing that the app does have that the web version doesn't have is that I can include um, GIFs or GIFs, however you want to pronounce it. I pronounce GIF. Um, so you can, do have the option of adding GIFs as well to your video. The PDF finally does have a lot of different application ideas that they use with their students. So you can always go into these and break these down further. Um, and it gives video guides that can be used. So these are great to give these, especially if you have students using it. These can be things that you can provide to them already that will give them um, references to how to do all of these different things. So this PDF is really useful to be able to use with not only your own reference, but with your students. So that's the shorts camera and the features of the camera all in a nutshell. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the mixtapes and how that works. So mixtapes, like I mentioned before, is where you can take a lot of different videos from different topics and different groups to create a mixtape. So in the mixtape dashboard, when you click on mixtape, it's going to take you to where you can create a mixtape. And then you have a title for your mixtape. You'll see your join code for that. And you'll know it's a mixtape because it has that plus sign. That's always how you know that this is a mixtape um, link and not a regular group or topic link. And then here you can go ahead and describe the purpose of this mixtape. So one idea for this would be maybe I want to go ahead and collect all of the uh, videos that my students did. So I can take all of the videos that my one student did throughout the year and I put them all in this mixtape. It has all of their videos from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And maybe this is something that I want to share with the parents and be like, look, this is what your child did all year long using Flipgrid. So, you know, that's an idea for mixtape, but there's a lot of different things that you can do, but it's just a way for you to be able to collect videos from all of your different topics or in all of your different groups and put them all into one place. And you simply do that by going into the video themselves. So whenever you're reviewing the videos in actions, it'll say add to mixtapes and it'll then give you the ability to add that video to whatever mixtape you created. So let's talk a little bit about feedback, right? Looking at video responses and feedback. So your feedback options are, um, you have a lot of different feedback options. And the way to review responses is that when you go into your topic, let me go back into my discussion. If I go into my topic, into my group, here's my topic. I just click on the title of my topic and it's going to then give me all of my videos are populated there. So from there, I can just click on it and I can start watching the video. You also have the ability within the actions, right? You're able to add that video to the mixtape like we talked about, or I can download the video, download the selfie, I can download the captions, or I can delete a response. Um, so this is where I can do that. I can also print QR codes. So each of these videos will then have their own QR codes. If I wanted to share these videos, I can print out the QR codes and each video would have its own QR code that can be shared out. And I can also export all of this data into a um, Excel sheet. 
exporting the data from a topic is going to collect all the responses on an Excel sheet. And you could easily see that as a Google sheet. It's going to list the students' names. It's going to timestamp it. And it's going to link the video. So that's also a really easy way to be able to um, take a look at the video. And I actually should have... Yes, here's an example of what it looks like. So this is the exported data from that topic, and it's going to give me what the topic title was. It's going to then show me the name, um, the email, the title of their video, and then there's my timestamp. And then here is the link to the video itself. So if I wanted to just quickly, another easy way, I don't have to go into Flipgrid to watch all the videos. I could just use this sheet and just go like down the video list one by one to see who did it. And I can also quickly just see through the list really quickly who did my video, who didn't, who still needs to do it. So it's a useful way to just kind of have a quick overview of who submitted what. Now to watch the videos, when I click on the video, it's very easy because the video will completely start playing here. And then on the side, you've got this little arrow and I can just toggle through the arrow and it'll just let me go through all the videos within the same window one by one. And then along the bottom, I have this feedback option where I can then leave my feedback for each video. So it's very simple to go through all of the different videos from one spot and leave your feedback for them. Now, when you create a topic, you have the ability to let me go into, let me just edit the topic. When you're creating a topic, there is this feedback feature as well that goes along with your topic where you can provide feedback. Um, you can set up a rubric. This is the basic feedback that comes with every topic from Flipgrid, or I can customize my feedback and create my own rubric and add all of my criteria. So I can set up this rubric and I can then save it there. That becomes default of my different feed of my of my Flipgrid video rubric and what I would then be looking for as I'm watching my students videos and I save that as part of my topic. So once I have my rubric created, when I first create my topic, when I go in to actually leave feedback, I will see that my rubric will populate there, right? Here, it's just using the basic one. But if I had created one, it would then show my rubric that I created. So feedback is really easily that I can use my rubric and fill it out. I can also record my feedback. So you have the ability of recording feedback for that student, it's a private feedback, so only that student would be able to see that recording of you. And then you can also leave comments. You can leave written feedback to the video as well. So you don't have to record your feedback, you can leave written feedback, or you can do both, that's up to you. Now, because each student has access to Gmail now, you can actually then be able to email the feedback to the student. Since they're signing in with their Google accounts, it's very easy because it'll just automatically, you click email feedback, it'll email that student back to their Gmail and they can access their feedback from there. It also has the option to copy a feedback link. Then you would actually have to provide that link to that student to be able to see that specific feedback that you left them. Um, so I can do this for each of my students as I'm watching their video um, very easily from that window. Um, and I can toggle and leave the feedback and record my feedback, fill out my rubric and leave the private comments if I need it to. Students can access their feedback, their recorded feedback by going to my.flipgrid.com. This is only going to work if the groups and the topics that the students have done have required them to use their Google account, right? So they can go to myflipgrid.com and it's going to ask them to, well, let me log out for a second, because it's going to ask them to log in with Google, right? When they do that, they choose their account. And then what they'll see is they'll see all of the groups that they're a part of, 
and all of the videos that they have created. So they can see their videos and they'll be able to see any kind of recorded feedback. So if the teacher did leave them recorded feedback, then they're able to view it. They also have the ability to download their videos or download the selfie, and they can actually then hide these videos or delete this video from their My Flipgrid. But that's how students can go in at any time and access the recorded feedback. If you left them written feedback on the rubric, that doesn't that can only be accessed through that email when it's sent to them. But the recorded feedback they can access by going to my.flipgrid.com and seeing their um, recorded feedback left by their instructor. So the discovery library. The discovery library is where you can find those collection of topics. So you'll see that when you create a topic um, as well, you have the ability of adding your topic to the discovery library. All right, I can add my topic to my discovery library, which means now educators from around the world can look at the discovery library and search for um, different types of topics for different types of subjects and come across mine and maybe they like it and they'll add it to their own collection to use it. So in the discovery library, you have the ability to add a collection. So if you find a lot of topics that are all related, I can save them all to one collection. Um, and I can also see all of the different topics that I have added to the discovery library already. By scrolling down, it gives it, I can see an overview of the different partners that are part of Flipgrid. Um, they have a topic of the day, they have a wonder of the day, um, they can see what's trending. There's featured collections. They do have, and I have this on the um, Google Classroom, they do have this on-demand professional development on Flipgrid as well. So they have videos created specifically for Flipgrid about Flipgrid that you can also watch. They're really great. And then here is where you will find all of the different topics and I can sort them and then I can also then filter them out by subject, by audience, um, or I can search specifically by whatever type of um, topic I'm looking for. You can see how many times it's been used um, and then you'll be able to click on it and it will open up um, the topic itself. This will open up this little window where you can see the topic. It'll give you what the instructions are. The integration notes are an overview of what the topic is used for, how you can use it in class. Um, and then you can either save it to a collection. You can share it with others. If you want to share this topic with other colleagues, you can email it to them. Or you can go ahead and add that topic to your discussion dashboard. I can add it as just a standalone topic or I can add it to an existing group. So I can very easily just click on it. It opens up, save the collection or add the topic to my group or I can share it out um, to whoever I want to share it out to. And so this gives you a, this gives you the directions that are the prompt um, this one doesn't have any specific notes that are in there, but it does have all of the things that you need right here in the directions. So I can add it or I can save it. The immersive reader, and I was going to mention it, this is something that you can find in all of Flipgrid. So whenever students have a topic and they have directions that they need to read, they have this little blue immersive reader button. And what they can do is click on it and it's gonna break down that text and it's gonna read it to them. So they can press play and that'll start to read the directions out to them, right? It can also then um, change the color. You can change the, so you can increase the speed, uh, the spacing rather, the size, so they can adjust it in different ways. Um, you want to separate it by syllables. You can show the nouns, like you can even do it that way. Um, and then reading preferences, you can take a look at if you want to show only one line, if you want to show multiple lines. So depending on the students and what their need is and what makes things easier, they can take any of that text that is part of their topic that they need as part of their directions. And by clicking on the immersive reader button that they'll see, um, they'll be able to have that text read to them in that specific way. 
And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about is Grid Pals. And Grid Pals, like I mentioned earlier, is that pen pal system. When you click on Grid Pals from the Discovery Library, let me get out of here. It's first going to be hidden. So in order to activate your um, Grid Pal profile, you need to click on Active. And then once you do that, it's going to ask you to complete a little bio about yourself. And this is what other educators will see about you. So it's a good idea to include, you know, what you're looking for. If you're looking for something specific um, here in your bio, you can add all of the different grades and subjects and then your location. And once you do that, you click the next button. Um, email invites will be toggled on. Now your email is not gonna be shared out. What will happen is if someone wants to send you an invite, Flipgrid will send you that notification that someone wants to connect with you. And if you agree to that, then you would be able to um, view each other's emails and then start to connect and well, figure out what you wanna do. You can also share out social connections if people then connect with you that way. And then you click on become a grid pal and then your um, profile becomes active. So from the grid pal main dashboard here, you'll actually are able to see all of the different grid pals that are available. There are over 32,000 grid pals all over the world. And you can start to search for them. You can narrow it down by grade or subject, and it'll start to populate down this list. And when you click on someone, right, it's going to give you what grades they're interested in, their subjects. Um, they'll, you, they're, you'll show here their social media. So here he has the YouTuber, and then you have that send an invite. So if you click on that, then you'll be able to send that person an invite. They accept and respond, and then you two can go ahead and become good pals and start connecting each other with each other's classes. So here you see all the different ones. Not everybody has, they have to have the email enabled to send an invite. So you'll see not everybody might have that on. But as you go through, you can then find someone to connect with if you're kind of interested to do that. We did do this one year. I did this one year with um, one of the second grade classes and we actually cre um, connected with a class in China. And so it was really fun to have the students connect with each other and leave videos and respond to each other. And what's great about Flipgrid, because it's something that's asynchronous, it can be all over the world because it doesn't matter if you're not in the same time zone, you're recording your videos, you'll see it later, and then you'll be able to respond to each other. So that's the Grid Pals option. So that is a basic overview of Flipgrid and all of the different things that you can do with it. Um, it's a great tool. It's a great way for students to share their ideas and their voice in a really simple manner. And it's really great to integrate in a lot of different ways and different assignments. So in the Google Classroom, you'll find not only this recording, I'm gonna post the a Padlet link as well for questions or clarifications that we'll discuss more on Thursday. And you'll also find the Flipgrid resources where you'll have links to that PDF like I showed you. There's also links to um, different blog posts and websites that has more ideas of how you can use Flipgrid in the classroom. Um, and so hopefully you have taken something important away from our session today on Flipgrid and hopefully you'll be using that in your class as well. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.